Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Matt Laidlaw, and on behalf of our team, I want to say welcome to Open Circle this morning. Um, it is a beautiful day, and uh, it's been a beautiful week and weekend uh, to be outside in the fact that you'd be willing to spend a little bit of time inside for this gathering with this group of people is a really, really beautiful thing. So thanks so much for being here this morning. Uh, this morning, um, after a few weeks of uh, or a few months of different kinds of gatherings um, during the season of Lent and then Easter and multiple guests. We're sort of uh, returning this morning to a bit of a familiar format. Um, while we do have some really remarkable guests joining us to lead us this morning, much of what we'll be doing um, should feel familiar to those of us who have been a part of these gatherings um, over the past few years. So uh, in a moment, I'm going to guide us in our opening practice. Um, and then our friend uh, Drew Nelson will be sharing some music with us. Uh, Abby Black will be sharing our story for all ages. We'll do a standing circles practice together. And then uh, Julian Newman will be teaching, joining us for the first time. So, um, and then after that, we'll have some coffee and uh, treats and have some fun with each other afterwards. Sound good? Okay. All right. Also want to say, um, it's been a weird, let's say, two years. For me, it's been a weird couple of years. Um, and uh, Sunday mornings continue to be these evolving processes. Even with the best planning, um, people are still getting sick, um, especially over the past few weeks. And people have a lot going on in their lives. So um, Drew was willing to join us uh, for music this morning on very short notice um, because our musician um, had a family emergency. And Abby Black was willing to share our story like on nine minutes notice um, because the person who was going to share our story um, was ill and let us know and gratefully didn't come sick, um, which we don't want anybody to do. Um, so we just continue to be grateful for everybody's flexibility and willingness to chip in and help make these community or make these gatherings what they will be together. So thank you, Drew, for coming on short notice. Thank you, Abby, for coming on short notice. And thanks, everybody, for being here this morning. So um, before our opening practice, how about this? Let's uh, stand up if you're willing and if you're able and peer across this room and maybe look for a few folks that you haven't seen in a while or have never met. Say hello. Give some fist bumps, elbow bumps, hugs, high fives, whatever it is to introduce yourself and welcome one another. All right, we will have plenty of more time to keep talking and chatting with each other throughout the gathering. And uh, before uh, I begin our, our opening practice, I just want to name that, um, I, and I just heard about this about an hour ago, uh, hour and a half ago on the drive in, about the incident in Buffalo yesterday. I don't know enough about what actually happened to be able to say anything remotely uh, <laughs> um, intelligent or helpful about the, the situation, except to say that uh, it feels like another incident that is very similar to a lot of other incidents that we've been talking about, praying about, advocating for a different way forward for the whole story of our community. Um, so for now, I'll just say um, with an open heart and as much compassion as empathy and empathy as we can offer um, that this is why we're here. This is why we're part of this place is to try and bring about a more loving world and that our hearts are broken um, for everyone who's been impacted uh, by what happened in Buffalo yesterday. And with that, let's hold two minutes of silence together. I'm not going to share the reading that I had planned because I just want us to open our hearts and our minds towards love and peace um, and against violence and hate of any kind. So I'd invite you to find a position in your chair that communicates openness to yourself and to one another and to God. For me, that's sitting up straight and I'm crossing my arms and legs. I invite you to take some deep inhales and exhales. Maybe close your eyes.
And we hold this, this time together for love and for peace. May it be so. If you've been a part of Open Circle at all in the past, you know that we have experienced music together um, in multiple different ways, and music has always been an important part of our practice and our experience together. Sometimes we sing, sometimes we listen. I think I remember one time there was dancing. Maybe, this is West Michigan after all. Um, regardless, the invitation is always the same. Um, to participate with open hearts and open minds, um, and to participate um, as actively or as passively as you might feel invited. Uh, this morning, our friend Drew Nelson, as I mentioned, um, is sharing some music with us. Um, Drew is a storytelling songwriter, a multi-instrumentalist, and God-fearing feeder of birds. He's a fly fisherman and a world traveler. He writes as a witness to the lives and journeys of those he has met along the way. Uh, Drew, you're a friend. We love you. We're so grateful you're here this morning. Join me in welcoming Drew Nelson. People from the record company wrote all that stuff. I didn't, I didn't do it. I, don't know. I do like to feed birds, though. There's a great poem by uh, Mary Oliver. It says, I'm a God-fearing feeder of birds, and I just always love that. She has a, a really great poem about going out in the woods and uh, getting, a, she's working for months to get these chickadees to land on her hand and eat. And she has this special relationship with these these precious little birds, and then she goes out in the woods one day, and there's some other guy out there, and they're eating off of her, his hand, and she's all mad. And I thought that was just wonderful. <laughs> it's such a human thing. Well, my friend Josh was supposed to be here today, and Josh is uh, really handsome and outgoing and friendly and has upbeat songs, and I'm Irish, so sorry. You got me <laughs> today. coffee cup There's a baseball game on the radio Go tag. And nobody knows why 
she does what she does but she does what she does just the way that I like it and so much love so little time show me your heart and I'll show you mine break me open there's only one thing you'll find so much love and so little time there's a warm breeze from the Caribbean And it warms her way up here, way up here in Michigan. And she's talking crazy as she drifts off to sleep. And she does what she does just the way that I like it. So much love, so little time. Show me your heart, and I'll show you mine. Break me open, there's only one thing you'll find. So much love, and so little time. There's a sunset Oh, with her name on it There are children Reaching for the star And then there's a way She drives me crazy does what she does just the way that I like it and so much love so little time show me your heart and I'll show you mine and break me open there's only one thing you'll find so much love, so little time. La 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 la, la 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 la, la la la.
hallelujah morning, oh love, it takes you without warning on a hallelujah morning. parts that and I'm three parts you oh baby that's a fact and I'm somehow responsible and just a little bit wild and I love it when you wear that dress and I love it when you smile on a hallelujah morning hallelujah morning oh love it takes you without warning on a hallelujah morning this river flow through me and wash my eyes so I can see on the record there's a really great guitar solo here but that guy's not here this morning so he's got to pretend got a big old moon to light my way and one little star help me navigate got an ancient choir to help me sing and a medicine song let it ring let it ring let it ring let it ring on a hallelujah morning a hallelujah morning oh love it takes you without warning on a hallelujah morning Hallelujah morning, hallelujah morning, oh love takes you without warning, hallelujah morning, Thank you, Drew. Um, at Open Circle, we share stories for all ages, stories for both the young and the young at heart. This morning, our friend uh, Miss Abby Black is going to be sharing our story. So if you are young, or you are young at heart, or you don't know what you are, but you want to see the pictures, I want to invite you to come up on stage with us and have a seat right here. You can climb up the front of the stage or walk up these stairs right here. Come forward. You're going to? OK, we'll see about that. Yeah, that's a pretty good scale.
Thank you, Abby. All right. Uh, we are now going to practice our standing circle practice. So I want to give a couple of reminders uh, before that. Uh, first, uh, this practice is completely optional. So you can signal that you want to participate by standing up in a minute. If you don't want to participate, you can feel free to stay seated where you are. You're free to go for a walk, whatever feels more comfortable for you. But we'll take about eight minutes on this practice together. Um, Zach, my remote's not working for some reason. So I wonder if you can get me to the next slide. Um, if you haven't participated in a standing circle before, um, there's really only um, five things you need to know, and these are our intentions for participating. Next one, next one, here we go. Our five intentions for participating in this practice is to speak from the heart, to listen from the heart, without saying too much, to say just enough, to respect one another, and to trust the process. So in a moment, I'm gonna invite us to stand up and get into groups of three or four. I would invite you to maybe find two or three people to be in a group with that you don't know very well or that you didn't come here with, but do whatever feels most comfortable for you. And once you have found um, groups of three or four people, um, there'll be three prompts on the slide. And you'll be invited, each of you one at a time, to respond to the first prompt, then everybody to the second prompt, and then everybody to the third prompt together. Um, can you give me the next slide, Zach? So our prompts for this morning is uh, to share your name and a word or a phrase that describes how you're feeling right now, uh, to describe one good moment you experienced outside this week, outdoors, in nature, in the sunshine, whatever that might look like for you. And then when it comes to seeking justice, what do you think the role is of a spiritual community? And what is your part to play in that? So if you're willing uh, and you're able and you want to participate in this practice, I'd invite you to stand up where you are right now. And this is, this is my favorite part of the gathering, to watch this part. I'm just going to be real honest about that. All fighting our middle school anxiousness. Do I make a run for it? Do I do it? How am I feeling? Um, I'll always say that I never want to do this practice beforehand. But afterwards, I'm always glad I did. I've never regretted it. So thanks for going for it. Find two or three other people. Once you've found your group, you can get started with the prompts. Thanks, everybody.
We're going to take about one more minute. So if you haven't had a chance to hear from everybody yet, do your best. All right, friends, if you're able to finish the phrase or sentence that you're in right now, find a seat. These are conversations that we can continue this morning and will be continuing long into the future. Thank you for being willing to be curious with one another and to open yourself up um, to this practice uh, together this morning. Um, and now I'm really excited uh, to introduce our guest teacher this morning, uh, Julian Newman. Uh, Julian is a certified diversity and inclusion thought leader based in Grand Rapids, Michigan. As a cultural intelligence strategist, author, and motivational speaker, Julian has spoken to more than 100,000 people nationally and internationally during the past 20 years. Julian shares his leadership development expertise with corporate, nonprofit, creative, and faith-based clients. And he has a unique gift of bringing people of diverse backgrounds together to find common ground and become more beautiful together. Julian is a hashtag girl dad of four lovely daughters and an advocate for women's empowerment. Julian, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. If you would join me in welcoming Julian Newman. Well, it is an honor to be with you today. And, um, you know, I really appreciated our what do we call that? We just did a minute ago. Standing circles. Standing circles, you know, and I think I agree when you said we're going to do this. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> sheesh, we're doing what? Um, but it was awesome. It was good. Had a great time talking with uh, Jason and Ed and uh, engaging in important conversation. So get my technology together here. Um, I want to, there's a few different scriptures I want to get to today, um, but I want to start with us just reading out of Romans chapter 12. I'm going to begin in verse 9, and I'm going to read through and just pray, and then we're going to get started. Is that cool? I hope so, because I don't have another plan, all right? <laughs> verse 9 says, love must be sincere, hate what is evil cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual further, fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another and do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone, if it is possible. As far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is hungry, he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll hear burning coals on his head. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity you've given us today to, um, to be with you, God, and to be with your people, Lord Jesus. And God, we ask that you would, um, you would empower and encourage us today. You would transform us today. You would guide and lead us today. You'd fill us today. And help us to be vessels of your grace to a world and a generation that so desperately needs it. Amen. Um, today I want to talk to you um, about joy. Um, as Drew said, and Drew, man, your voice is amazing, bro. Dang, dude. Man. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I didn't know was it was like a Johnny Cash situation happening this morning. That was awesome, bro. You're very, very good. Very good. Like, wow. Um, but the title of our talk today is called uh, The Beautiful People. And we talk about um, how to live a life that is indestructible. Now, um, I think, Matt, and you and I talked maybe about a year or so ago, year and a half or maybe. I think it was, um, I think COVID um, shut down and everything was happening. Um, I, I believe that George Floyd um, had just been killed via murder. Um, we have, you know, the pandemic. We've got the uh, racial reckoning that happened not long after that. Um, his death was catalyzed, I think it was May 25th of 2020. Um, and you think about all the things that have happened since that time period, right? We got Ukraine, we got Russia, we've got um, Afghanistan. Uh, we had the, uh, the 2020 election and all the craziness surrounding that. We had January 6th. And all the things that have happened up until this particular moment. You referenced the shooting in Buffalo earlier where uh, 10 people uh, were killed by someone who um, uh, shot them with a rifle that had the N-word written on it. And there's a whole lot to say about that uh, atrocity and the racial motivation or racist motivation um, with this, this man that drove three hours to go to this community that was predominantly black to commit this heinous crime. Within the last two months, our own community, with the death uh, by a police officer of Patrick Leola that happened, we live in a time of pain in too many instances. I love the question that you asked. What is the role that we have as a Christian community, as a, uh, a, a Jesus-centered community for justice? Deep question that we could actually spend all day talking about. One of the things I offered to our discussion was part of, I believe, our job is to be in the midst of and not just engage from far away. Have you ever been in a situation where you were hurting or you saw someone hurting that you loved? And what if you said, hey, hang in there, brother. You know, I'm a, I'm a father of four daughters and my youngest is with me today. And there are times where she just runs and grabs a hold of me and squeezes me tight. What if I said, hey, I'll do it from over here. So part of our job as Jesus followers is not simply to observe, but to engage. The question is, how do we engage? And I wasn't actually, this is not a part of my message, and I'll get to my message in a moment. But I think part of our engagement is to learn what is happening. 
Yeah, part of it is to figure out what is going on in the world. But we can learn stuff and we can learn it without practicing what we're learning, and there's no power with just learning without living. Can you say amen to that? I don't know if you guys say amen in open circle, but if you do, you can do it now. Amen, my brothers and sisters. We have to learn, but we have to live what we learned. When we live what we've learned, after we've come off or outside of the, the confines of our cultural comfort zones and engage up close instead of far away, then transformation happens. We learn new stuff by getting off the couch of our cultural comfort zone, then we live what we've learned as we've done that. How many would get on a plane if somebody learned how to fly a plane on Instagram or YouTube videos? Would you do that? Of course you wouldn't, and neither would I. You wouldn't get our heart surgery, you wouldn't go to a dentist if they said, you know what, TikTok was my certificate. I got my diploma from TikTok, right? You may have all the information, but because you've not practiced it with living, your learning doesn't have the power that it needs to have. But after we've lived what we've learned, we can lead with love at a higher level. And we can lead a different legacy. You and I, we have inherited things because of generations prior to us. But we can give the generations beyond us something different if we learn something different, if we live differently, if we love in a different way as a result of what we lived, and then we can lead and leave a different legacy. So let's get to what we're talking about today. So with everything that is going on in the world, and I, I walk around, so I'm looking at this, and hopefully this isn't too um, disconcerting. Um, but we got a lot of things happening in the world, right? So the question is, how do we respond and how do we live in the moment that we're existing in right now and doing it well with everything that is happening? How do we not just survive this moment and not thrive, but overcome? How do we do that? Because I, if our faith is something that we simply sing about, that we gather um, on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis, and that's all it is, but our faith does not have transformative power individually, collectively, and in our community and in the world, then what is it for? Why would I do something if it has no power to bring transformation to me or to others? There's um, a scripture... And I believe it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says this, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. You've probably heard it. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're per perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. What does Paul say that we are? He says, we are oppressed. He said, we are perplexed. We are persecuted and we are struck down. Have you ever been there? Maybe you are there. And if you've not been there or you're not there now, I'm sure you've been there and there's a good chance you'll be there. I think we're in a moment of perplexing. I think we're in a moment where it feels like we're being pressed. You think about all the craziness that was going on at school board meetings around masks and vaccinations, right? Crazy town. And then some. That's the world that we're living in right now. But the Bible says that Paul declares that these are the things that we are. But it also communicates the things that we're not. We're not crushed. We're not in despair. We're not abandoned. And we're not destroyed. Jesus says, in this world, we're going to have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. How do we live an indestructible life? Notice I didn't say an unmarked life. Notice I didn't say an unblemished life. Notice I didn't say an unvarnished life. Notice I didn't say a perfect life. 
Because if you're living as a human on this side of eternity, there's no such thing as unblemished, unmarked, unvarnished, or perfect. Can you say amen? Open circle in the house today. None of us have been there, right? But we can live an indestructible life by grabbing a hold of something called joy. Before I continue, I want to tell you a story. About 100 or so years ago, I was a kindergartner, all right? And I was a kindergartner um, at a Freeport, at Freeport Elementary School in Sacramento, California. And I was a little dude. I liked to draw like my youngest likes to draw. Loved art, loved comic books, loved superheroes, just like I do today. Spider-Man was my dude, and he is today as well. In addition to all of that, I also liked Charlie Brown and his whole crew, the Peanuts. And one of the things I can relate to about Charlie Brown is that Charlie Brown was uh, kind of an awkward dude, all right? And, and I think all of us can relate to Charlie Brown in our coming of age of kind of not always getting it right and often getting it wrong and Lucy and bullies and all sorts of different things. I could relate to that. But I could also relate to another one of the characters, and it was Linus. And it wasn't because Linus was a truth teller or it wasn't because he seemed to be this sage or um, vessel of wisdom. It was because Linus, if you know Charlie Brown and his crew, always had a blanket. And I, as a little dude, always had a blanket with me. And so I was so into my blanket that I would take it places. We'd go to the store, I would have my blanket. My blanket would be in the car. Uh, my, my blanket would be out and about. I, I took my blanket to school with me as a kindergartner. And so I would have my, my lunch, my backpack, my stuff, and I would have my blanket. And I would put my blanket in the little cubby, all right? And so with all my other stuff. Now, we had a scheduled fire drill one day. Now, we all know what a fire drill is. The alarm goes, you go out to class, you line up, your teachers, we wait, then everything's clear, you go back in, right? So we did all that, we knew the fire drill was coming, and I knew it, I was coming, and we go out. So we're in line, we're doing our thing, and I don't know if it was the sound of the alarm, I don't know if it was standing in the sun, I'm not sure what was happening, but somewhere between leaving the classroom and getting in line, I remembered fire, but I forgot drill. So somewhere in my head, I had this thought, again, remembering fire, forgetting drill, remembering my backpack, remembering my lunch, then remembering my blanket. Oh my goodness, fire, again, I forgot drill. So I, once I think about fire, forgetting drill, remembering my blanket, I jumped out of line, I started running to the, the class. I'm in the school, I wanted to get to my class. Why? Because I wanted to rescue my blanket from being burned up in the fire. So I'm running my little, you know, my little bitty legs. I'm going as fast as I can to get to the, the, the classroom, to get in the cubby, to get my blanket, to save it from the fire. And I, I think it was Miss Baker. I think that was her name. Miss Baker, she started running too. And she scoops me up. So I'm sprinting, and she just scoops me up. And here I'm, a little dude. I'm going, ah! And she's pulling me back to the line, right? And it was funny. I still remember the feeling of trying to run and her pulling me back. It was kind of like a movie. And so she gets me back in the line. I'm crying. I'm going crazy. I'm thinking about my blanket. And I, later on, I, you know, finish the drill. My blanket's fine. The question that I would submit to you is, why did I do that? Why was I willing, as a little dude, to risk life and limb for a blanket? If I were to ask you, what would you risk life and limb for? See, the reason I did it is because I cherish my blanket. I love my blanket. My blanket was awesome and fuzzy. My blanket was precious to me. 
Now, um, the, the term precious or my precious is something that um, Tolkien made popular in his writings in the, the movies where Gollum or Smeagol would talk about the ring of power being his precious. What is precious to you? What would you risk life and limb for? I, I would say that most of us would say for our children, uh, um, um, our, our, our relatives, our spouse, our, our loved ones, the people that are important to us, I would put myself in a position of potential harm because I would want to rescue them and help them. They're precious. If we were to ask Jesus that same question, his response would be you, it would be me, it would be us, it would be human beings. And the reason why we know this is because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says that we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. The Bible lets us know that Jesus experienced hardship, but he did it because there was joy before him. What was the joy? The joy was us. After he overcame, he sat down. You and I live in a very crazy time. What is the joy that's before us? Now, when we think about joy, what do you think about? Joy, happiness, gladness, awesome, yes. Ugh. We all love like things that make us happy and joyful, right? Or inner gladness. If somebody were to hand you a million dollars, would you, hey, awesome. That's what the people do like on the game shows, right? They start dancing. Why are they dancing? Why? Because now I can pay off my car. Now I can get out of debt. Or people that win the lottery, whatever, they start dancing. You look at um, some of our young people, you know, they get to meet their favorite um, singer or celebrity. They just get excited. They start dancing. I can remember years ago, for those of you that are younger, you're like, what are you talking about? But I remember Michael Jackson had a uh, HBO special where he did a concert in Bucharest, I believe. And people were like breaking down, crying, fainting, oh, Michael, and all this other stuff. I remember as a young dude watching this, like, man, I like Mike too, but really? <laughs> See... We can put joy in that box, but that's joy that's connected to happiness, and happiness is connected to circumstance. I'm happy when my circumstance is well, but I'm not happy or joyful when it's not. See, biblical joy, or the Greek word for joy is chara or kara, which means inner gladness. But biblical joy is not connected to the things that would make us happy. In fact, the Bible says that we have to, should have joy in the midst of hardship. How many guys have ever read James chapter 1? James chapter 1 is one of those parts of the Bible when somebody says, hey, let's study James chapter 1. It's like, ah, oh, man. It's like, let's study the book of Job. Ah, oh, Really? And the reason why is because this is what James says. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. What James is saying, joy, when bad stuff happens. When's the last time somebody said, you know, oh man, I just lost my job. Man, oh, it's awesome. Nobody says that. But, joy, but James is saying, have joy when you have difficulty because it produces something powerful in you. It produces something extraordinary in you. Joy is often accompanied by suffering, by pain, by challenge. There's a part of our faith that we don't lean into enough. 
And as a result of us not leaning into it enough, when adversity or challenge comes our way, do we don't know how to respond because we've not practiced it. Again, Jesus says, in this life you'll have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We are living in a time of great adversity, great turmoil, great um, challenge. But the people of God have to stand up in the midst of it, and we have to respond in a different spirit. We have to re- respond in a different, with a different mentality. So the question is, how do we do it? The, the first thing I think that we do in a practical way is we choose joy. I decide to choose joy. And in fact, I nearly every day get up and will literally say, God, I choose joy today. Because joy is a decision that transcends my circumstances and my condition. I choose joy. I choose joy. I choose joy. I heard it say that, that happiness um, is based on circumstances, but joy lasts and it endures. So the first thing is I do is I choose it. I set my mind and I choose joy. That means I am going to choose joy and I am going to exercise inner gladness in spite of my circumstances if they are unfavorable. So I'm going to choose joy. The next, you know what, why don't you say that? We're going to choose joy, all right? I'm going to say one, two, one, two, one, two, three, choose joy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to speak joy. So I am going to say stuff that's in alignment with the decision that I made about joy. What does that look like? How many guys have ever been around a negative person who just is always speaking negatively and it just like messes with the vibe, right? My young, my, my, um, my older daughters that are still young people will say, oh, dad, don't mess up the vibe. We're just vibing. All right. Uh, sometimes that's going to have to tell you what to do. So I'm going to mess the vibe up. All right. Discipline will mess up the vibe. You're laughing because you know, huh, Gianna? And so, but there are people with their negative mentality mess up the vibe, right? We had a conversation, my youngest and I, I think just a couple days ago, after school about people that were messing up the vibe. We know that life or death can come out of our mouth according to the word of God. We've experienced that. There are people that bring the vibe down. There are also people that raise the the roof with their enthusiasm. You, You know the word enthusiasm, the root word means to be filled with God. They lift the atmosphere. I remember when I was a young dude and I was wanting to go into theological school. And before I was doing or um, before I was full time as a business owner in a diversity inclusion space, I was uh, I was a minister for a lot of years. And so um, I remember I would spend time with this. The, my, my youth pastor is a mentor. And every time we would have we'd have these meetings on Tuesday mornings. And I would come out of those meetings and I just felt lifted up. He raised the roof. He shifted the atmosphere. He raised the vibe. I have to speak this. I have to get the right words in my mouth coming out of my mouth. And I have to, oh, I want to. You know, the Bible says. Um, and we read it in Romans, it says, bless and not curse. When's the last time you were driving somewhere and somebody was driving creatively, right? And they creatively drove and cut you off. 
and they cut you off as they were creatively driving, and you said, bless them, Jesus. Bless them, Lord. All right? You probably didn't say that. What the scriptures are saying, instead of cursing, start blessing with our words. It is counterintuitive to do this. It's weird to do it, right? I don't want to bless, I want to curse. I want to respond, and I want to hit them back because they hit me. I have to choose joy. I have to speak joy. I have to practice joy. How do I practice joy? I practice joy by blessing and not cursing. I practice joy by being generous with those that have taken from me. The Bible says, do not look to get revenge, make space for God. The, the Bible says, do not be overcome with evil, but what? Overcome evil with what? Good. That's a beautiful thing to say. Doesn't it sound so good? It's one of those things that would look good on a, on a greeting card. Do not be overcome with evil overcome evil with good amen but practicing that is a whole nother thing I want you to think right now about somebody who's harmed you hurt you traumatized you you got them in your head Somebody was mean to you somebody that took from you think about them how do you feel about this person or these people you want revenge? You want to get them back? You want to harm and hurt them the way they don't harm and hurt you? Now, I know that all of you are such, you know, spiritual pillars of strength. You would never, ever think that. That's people with other, other gatherings and other communities and other cities and other churches, right? We all wrestle with that. Because it's not natural to do these things. But that's what Paul was saying. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this grace of God in these human vessels. This all-surpassing power of, that is, is from God and not of us. The last thing that we have to do is we have to Beyond choosing joy and speaking joy and practicing joy, we live joy by being next to the joyful one. His name is Jesus. I have to regularly practice being in the presence of God. I have to regularly practice getting into the scriptures. I have to regularly practice getting before God and saying, Lord, this is not natural for me. This isn't easy for me. This isn't cool with me naturally. I need you to work on me. I need you to shift and change my nature because I want to do this and you're calling me to do that. Because God, I want you to be the most precious thing. I want your ways to be the most important and significant thing. I want to elevate my life beyond the crazy of my generation. I want to be able to speak hope, live hope, and release hope into it because I am connected to the most hopeful and joyful one. Moses said in Psalms, I think it's in the 80s, he says, God, teach me to number my days that I may live a life of wisdom. Do you know that you and I at some point are going to transition from this life to the next one. And some of the things that we get so bogged up in don't mean that much when you look it into the light of eternity, with the light of eternity. And so I tell myself that often, well, let me have, let me look at the world through an eternal lens, 
Let me look at my life that way. And the investments that I make in alignment with your, your paradigm, God, your kingdom paradigm, Lord, help me and let me invest in eternity. What is done in secret and faithfulness to God will be rewarded openly. Lord, let me be a person of joy. Let me be a person of joy. Last question, then we'll close. What if God offered you the opportunity to get everything that you want, but there was only one catch? He couldn't join you along the way. You get everything you want, all the money, all the this, all the that. And maybe you're saying, man, I want washboard board abs. And I want a perfect smile. I want to live in Bahamas. I want... What if you could have all that you'd ever want, but he wouldn't join you along the journey? I brought up Moses, and I thought about a time where God said, I'll give you everything, but I'm not going along the way. I'll give you happiness, but you won't have my presence. And Moses said, I'd rather have hardship in a difficult circumstance and still have you. Every time I read that part of the Bible, I wonder, I think, and I say, God, let my heart be that way too. There's a quote by Dr. Kubler Ross, who popularized the five stages of grief, who says this, the most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen. You and I are ordained, destined, and purposed to be beautiful people releasing beauty in an ugly world. The challenge is when the beautiful people get the ugly on them and forget that they're beautiful people. What God wants to tell us is that we are beautiful people, ordained, destined, and purposed to release beauty into the world because we're connected to the beautiful one. We choose joy, we speak joy, we practice joy, and we live joy because we're connected to the joyful one. Let me pray for you, beautiful people. Lord, I thank you so much for the chance that you've given us that those that are ordained, destined, and purposed, redeemed to be beautiful, that we are to release beauty before an ugly world. We thank you so much for your grace. We thank you so much for your compassion, for your empathy, your kindness and long-suffering with us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be carriers and vessels of joy. We are pressed, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We, we are struck down but we are not destroyed. Thank you for not abandoning us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving us and loving us. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Amen.
Let's thank Julian for joining us this morning. Um, I know it took a while for us to figure out um, the right day and time and topic for you to join us, Julian, and um, this just felt like the right time and the right morning. So thank you for your words and your presence today. We're really, really grateful. Uh, Zach, can you get me the next slide? Uh, before we go this morning, a couple of quick reminders. Not that one. That's where we'd put the teaching slides if we had any. That's why it said teaching slides on it. Um, a couple of reminders. Um, we have a gathering next Sunday, May 22nd. Um, I'll be teaching and trying to wrap up our Practicing With series, and our friend Tim Sayers will be joining us again and sharing some music. Um, next Sunday is our uh, final gathering in this rhythm of gatherings. If you've been a part of Open Circle um, over the past four years, you know that June, July, and August tend to look a little bit different. So we won't be meeting on Sunday mornings regularly over the summer, uh, but we've got a couple of things already on the calendar. Um, first, May 24th, that's in like a week and a half already, um, we're having an online conversation uh, with Brian McLaren. He has a new book coming out called Do I Stay Christian? which is not a book um, meant to convince any of us to stay Christian or not, but it's, this book is a guide uh, to help all of us um, try and figure out um, what it looks like to have a spiritual identity um, that feels like it has integrity, makes sense in our own story, and makes sense of the world that we're living in right now. Um, the book is really helpful. Brian will have some really helpful things to say, but we'll also get the chance to ask him some questions. So that'll be on Facebook Live. Next week, you'll all get emailed um, a uh, opportunity to submit some questions. If you'd like to submit some questions for Brian to answer um, in advance, it'd be helpful for me to have a few of those. But that'll be 8 p.m. May 24th online. June 3rd, um, we're having a concert and a picnic at the Grant Pavilion at Millennium Park. That's a Friday evening. We'll have some inflatables, games, usual uh, treats and fun for the kiddos um, for the first hour. And then around 7 p.m., um, our friend Molly, um, who joined us pre-COVID um, and shared some music. She's fantastic. Um, so bring food, bring drinks, bring whatever you want to sit on. We'll provide the rest. It'll be a really fun evening. June 18th um, is the uh, Pride Festival in Grand Rapids. Open Circle is helping to sponsor that, and we will have a booth at the festival. Um, if you'd like to help us uh, manage the booth, um, talk to me after the gathering or shoot me an email. Um, that's going to be a really fun and important day. And then uh, July 31st, um, we're going to the beach at Camp Geneva again like we have the past few summers. Um, there'll be a handful of other things that we'll be enjoying together this summer, so stay tuned for that. And also, if you would like to host a gathering, a happy hour, a book club, a study, brunch, whatever, walk in the park, Bigfoot expedition, whatever you want to do. Um, in the May update email, there was a link for you to fill out, and uh, you'll get that information to us, so we'll help you promote it. We'll, we'll help spread the word, um, because we've got people in this community who've got good ideas and want to gather some people, so if you'd like to do that, um, you can take advantage of that opportunity as well, and please stay tuned for other things going on this summer. Um, in about 20 minutes, we're going to clean up. So if you're still around and you'd like to help, we would, we're always grateful for that. And then um, if you want to help make gatherings like this, our summer gatherings, um, and help further the mission of Open Circle, um, you can give at opencirclecommunity.org slash give, or there's a small cash box in the exhibit hall as well. That's our turbo reminders for this morning. So stand up if you're willing and you're able um, and receive uh, these words of blessing um, and benediction as we go. Um, and if you're willing, maybe close your eyes, hold your hands open in front of you. My Open Circle family this week, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May you find goodness May you find grace. Peace be with you, my friends. Have a great week.